Now, without further delay, I wanted to uh, introduce our special guest, Al Grifka. Al is a CNC manager at Conley Manufacturing. Al has been using RhinoCam for the past six years for tool and die, as well as mold machining applications. How you doing, Al? Pretty good, pretty good. Take it over, Al. All right. Uh, yes, my name is Al Grifka. I am um, CNC manager at Conley Manufacturing, located in uh, Shelby Township in uh, Michigan. Uh, I have been using the Rhino Cam for about the last six years to do um, design uh, molds, fixtures, and um, also mostly as a, a cam software to uh, lay cutter path and to actually cut the details and cut the molds. Um, one of the things that I really like about Rhino Cam is that um, the cost effectiveness compared to Master Cam, and also another thing I really like about it is the ease of use. Um, it's really easy to use, and these webinars, you know, explain a lot of the a lot of the stuff or a lot of the questions. So it's nice to be able to go back and um, rewatch the webinars, stuff like that, to uh, really get a, a good idea of uh, completing the operations. There's a lot of tool paths that you can use. There's a lot of different different ways that you can do things. Um, it's a really really useful tool um, here at our shop at Conley Manufacturing. Uh, Al, what do you what do you do there at Conley Manufacturing? As far as uh, your customers and and your processes, can you tell us a little bit about uh, Conley? Yeah, so um, at Conley we do a lot of um, automotive and aerospace work. Um, for automotive, we primarily do checking fixtures, which um, for those of you that aren't familiar with checking fixtures, uh, in automotive process when the parts are coming down the line, they'll use um, a jig. A checking fixture uh, to check the parts, say for the buttons that are on your radio or even your door panel, your mirrors, glass, um, your hood, any kind of engine component, any kind of steering components. So basically, what we do is we'll um, replicate a fixture that is will hold um, that particular part in a certain manner uh, to be able to check it to. So that when the parts are coming down the line, they may pull, say, one out of every five or ten or twenty parts and um, put it in this fixture and check it to make sure that their process and the production process um, is working correctly and it's a, a safe fail where they can catch bad parts coming down the line and maybe they might have to alter um, some of their processes to make that part perfect every time it comes off the line. And then um, we do also um, mold work for um, aerospace, we'll do um, like layups for uh, carbon fiber, stuff like that, um, fiberglass layups, um, molds, we'll do uh, injection molds um, just for all different types of um, airplane uh, aerospace type of parts. Um, so mostly, primarily we're um, aerospace and automotive, and then we also do um, some customer related things. Um, we'll see later in the in the model that we're going to look at here. So in the next slide here, so here's a, a couple pieces that I've made. Um, these are actually um, this here is a mold. It sits inside this other piece. You can see there's a through hole here. This would be one of the datums. This is what lines up down here in the bottom of the hole. And then there's a back groove here. And then they'll use um, an, an inject, inject in, injecting process to uh, actually inject. Uh, this, I believe, is for a rubber injection. So they'll inject uh, in there to make the part, form the part, all the walls, um, all this contour on top and, uh, and on the bottom. So this part here would actually flip right over, fit right inside there. The vacuum grooves um, and everything would sit right inside there. And it would locate off of this datum here and this datum here. Um, same thing with uh, this part on the bottom. Um, this here will go right through that hole upside down. As you see, and there's uh, half 13 key inserts uh, in these holes here. A lot of times in uh, aerospace, a lot of the material is aluminum, obviously, to make it lighter. But they'll have uh, steel key inserts on the insides here. So this part fits right inside here. Um, as you can see in this picture, that's it actually the parts mated together. Um, on the end here, there'll be a, 
I believe it's a, a quarter pipe tap, and that's what they'll use to hook up their injecting processes, um, their injection hoses, and uh, stuff like that. So then on the next slide, uh, these are a couple other things that we do. Um, this piece here was actually a prototype for an um, uh, aerospace company. They s wanted us to make six of these. Um, it's a vacuum uh, coupler, I call it. What they'll do is they wanted six of them. This is the, would be the end of the vacuum where it would suck from. They wanted to check um, suction pressure. So once they got it to their facility, they were going to use different size hole patterns and different size hole schemes to see what kind of pressure that they could get from that. Um, so on the bottom of this, is it's, the inside of this is all hollow. Um, this is where it would hook up to their um, their vacuum port. It's basically the, the head of the vacuum. Um, this here um, would be like a strapping fixture. So there's two dowels for location and there is uh, two tap holes to hold it down. That would most likely be flipped upside down um, to hold some type of uh, beam or hold something to the side of uh, side of the plane or the inside. Uh, there's uh, some counter sinks and some grooves down in here where there'd be a feature that would stick through on the other side um, for like a hoist ring or something of that nature. This down here is actually um, a checking fixture, part of a checking fixture block. So they will, as a production process, they'll stamp, this is to check sheet metal um, steel parts typically between a, a sixteenth and an eighth, eighth inch thick. Um, so they would set the part on top of this. It actually wraps around the other side here and then here they would use a feeler gauge to uh, check part tolerance. Um, same thing like right here on this top part. These here would be the, the nets or the datums where the part would actually sit at. And then same concept here, they would use a uh, feeler gauge to check the, the contour of this of the part here. There's a couple of bushing holes where they would use um, go, no go pins or gauges to, uh, to make sure, again, that once the parts are coming down the line in the um, production process, that everything is, is perfect or within spec for them to be able to continue uh, their production processes. So then on the next slide here, this is um, this would be one of more of our customer uh, specialty things. Uh, this actually was for a friend of mine. He wanted to, he has a few injection molds um, at his house and in his garage. It's kind of like a home, home workshop. So he wanted me to design a two-piece mold for him um, using a part positive, which is this here. Um, so I designed this in Rhino, um, took the part positive, did a split where my parting line, where I wanted my parting line at here, did a, a couple different operations to make sure my parting line was um, right on the edge of the glass uh, of the frame itself where I, where I wanted it at. And then the, we put uh, some holes here for uh, locating it, the two parts together. And um, as you can see, we've got quite a few small cutters that will be going down in here. Um, and this is what Rhino Cam was really good for is, um, you know, say maybe one operation, cutting operation um, doesn't, doesn't quite meet your needs. There's multiple different cutting operations that, and parameters that you can set to really get down into the fine detail and um, making sure, especially in a mold, um, that your parting lines are, are really good because in a mold, anything that is um, not quite correct is going to show up on your final part. So with Rhino Cam, it was really easy to put my part positive in there, <clears throat> make a, bound, a box around it, you know, check where my uh, parting line was going to be at, and then half the two molds, basically. Um, so, and this part here, we're getting ready to cut. We haven't cut it yet. Um, we, we cut one out of Delren, then we ended up changing a few things to it, uh, plastic, cut it out of plastic, and um, eventually here, the next week or two, we hope to cut it out of uh, aluminum, like 6061, and check uh, 
how it mates up to it to itself and everything like that. Put it in the injection mold and stamp, uh, inject a few parts and uh, see how it looks and see if uh, we need to alter anything. And then from there, we'll see how many parts that the jig will last for being made out of aluminum. And then if need be, we'll um, make it out of steel. Okay, Al. And, uh, oh, sorry to interrupt you, Al. Go ahead. No, no. I that's uh, just getting ready to hand it back over to you, Don. And uh, yeah, if anybody wants to check out um, our website, it's kindlymanufacturing.com. And uh, yeah, nice talking with everybody. Okay, Al. If you could uh, hang with us a bit, we may have some questions come in uh, uh, from our attendees. They may have some questions for you. So if you don't mind hanging around just a bit, that would be great. Absolutely.